still present free Friday webinars. I'm coming to you today from the wonderful San Antonio, Texas, which is where I am originally from. And hopefully you can see the things on my desktop. Um, can you all type to me if you can see the things on my desktop? Because I can't see the chat right now. And every Friday it's free, so you're more than welcome to invite your friends and everybody else to come and see this. <laughs> so can everyone see the first slide that says designing class project for language learners? Check the chat box. Yes, okay, awesome, thank you Sue. Okay, so here we go. Um, okay, so today's topic is actually inspired by someone that I talked to or, or listened to the other day um, at ISTE because I've been in Philly. I just recently got back to Texas. And one of the things they said was that I do believe that teachers should teach to the ta um, well, should teach their course books and should teach skills and this and the curriculum. And one of the reasons and uh, this teacher made a really good point was because when you think about it, that's what the situation is for most teachers. So I want to show you a way that when I was in the Texas public school system and when I was teaching English language learners, how I kind of was able to do this but still make it very, very interactive and engaging for students. You can email me for a certificate of attendance if you would like, but you can also go to this address bit.ly slash ELT link. And yes, you have to capitalize the ELT um, to find many of the different types of um, resources. So here is a question that many, many teachers and probably you have as well. When you step into the classroom, you have a curriculum, you have skills, you have learning objectives and your students have to pass tests. Um, if not, there are consequences. This is our reality. So the question becomes, how do you teach skills, the curriculum, yet you want to be a good teacher and engage them? Well, I think you can do both. So one of the things that I like to do is, um, and I'm going to give you a very specific example of what this looks like. So the first thing I like to do, especially with English language learners, is to start with the skills. So some of the skills that I like to make sure um, that are in what I teach, I like to make it all kind of come together. I like list, um, lessons where it's not only listening, but it integrates all the skills. And what is one of the ways that you can do this? Well, you may have heard of project-based learning or even problem-based learning. Um, or hands-on learning, no matter what you call it, doing these types of projects, and especially if it has multimedia or tech components, you can use all the skills. So you can use the listening, the writing, the speaking, the reading. If you're teaching math, then just throw math into that. So once you have a basic foundation of the skills that you need to teach, I think that's really important uh, because this will help you with designing these kind of project-based uh, type of learning task. And then the next thing is um, to look at are what are your objectives. So here, how, uh, many of you, if you're in Europe and you're European-based, and even if you're um, in other places around the world, a lot of you may have adopted the CEFR, which is the Common European Framework. And uh, this is just a picture that I took off the website. So. I think it's good to understand where you're coming from. In Texas, it was a different types of objectives. So I had to go look at the Texas objectives. But when you look at the website, you'll see that many of the objectives, when you take out all this gobbledygook, all the big language, you'll really find out the basic components that they're trying to teach the students. Um, and it's not that hard. It's just sometimes that we get so um, so mixed up with all the meta language in it that it's really difficult to understand. When 
really at a first level, it's just telling you, oh, make sure the students are learning how to speak, how to listen, how to write. Well, you can do a digital storytelling project and you can have them speak, listen, and write or learn how to read. You can learn specific vocabulary. You can have them uh, do different things like that. So I think once you know the objectives, I don't think we should get really frightened by them. We just make them as simple as we can. And then another thing is you have to teach the curriculum. Well, I had several, several books. This is, you may, <laughs> if you're an English language teacher, have seen this. These are the themes that are in the um, Oxford English Picture Dictionary. And these are actually many of the themes. Um, I, this was one of eight books that I had. And I had to cover the different themes and things like that. But the great thing is that what I did was, and, and this comes to where an example of how I did a project based on everything that I wanted to teach and how it became this very long month project, uh, several months, um, and just incorporated everything I had to teach. So I had a choice. I could either use the book and teach with the book and do the workbook part, and I could have them do the listening, but I didn't want to do that. I really wanted them, my students who were high school students, and they were from many, many, many different countries and spoke different, different languages, um, I think over 12 different languages in one class. And so what I wanted them to do is I wanted them to really learn what these words meant. And at the same time, I also wanted to teach them different things that I feel as a teacher are really important that are not in the curriculum. So for example, uh, global class curriculums um, or global collaboration projects. And I think those are something that they're not in the curriculum, so they're often missed. But that's one thing I wanted to teach. I wanted to teach. Um, using technology effectively because they're going to have to do this in their own lives. And that's what I wanted to do, real world learning, things that were really applicable to them. I wanted to teach them about American culture. I wanted to teach them how to collaborate with each other and learn about each other's culture. So one of the things that I did was that I looked at these themes and I tried to figure out how I could make that real for them how I could engage them. And this is what I came up with. Now this is just one example. You can use this inside your student's lesson. Um, but you don't have to. Uh, you can come up with your own projects. The other thing I wanted to say was, um, I think it is important for us to look at the test. So one of the ways that I could continue to do this, and I was able to have the curriculum open and teach project-based learning and really have the freedom to be able to have my students do very interactive and innovative things. One of the reasons is because I did make sure that it did cover the test skills. Now, that doesn't mean that we spent every single class period taking practice tests or bubbling answers or anything like that. But in my mind, I did know what the test would look like. And I did have a few questions every once in a while, that really did help the students make the connection. And I think that's OK. Oh, OK. So I'm going to show you the project. That's the next one. Is everybody still following this OK? I hope so. Sorry. <laughs> OK, so um, if you are, if you could let me know, that would be really great because I can't see it. You probably see Roscoe right now. Okay, good. I, okay, so can everybody see something that says the family experience? Yes, okay, great. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> okay, so this is what my students did. Um, and this is when we had, this was several years ago. You can see it says 2005. So this wasn't when we had Web 2.0 tools and things like that. <laughs> OK, so this is called the family experience. And what I wanted to do was this was specifically American English. So I wanted to teach my students about American culture. So what I did was I broke them into different partnerships. 
And at the time, um, some of them even had mixed family partnerships. So the way I did this was I took different, all their names, I put them inside um, a, a bag, um, and then what I would do is they would take out their name from the bag, and guess what? That's who they were married to. And once you're married, um, you have children. So then they would decide as a couple who they would be married to. Now, I didn't have an even number of, uh, of, of parents, so I would get children from other classes, and they would, um, from my other classes who were more advanced, and they would offer to be parents as well. Um, and, and many of you may have heard of this, the eight children. So this is the eight children. They got to name them. Oh, you can't hear me? Can everybody hear me okay? Hear me? Just type in yes, someone. Hmm. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to try to take off. Okay, so a lot of you can hear me. Okay, great. Okay, so they got to make decisions. They got to decide how many children they would um, they would have and things like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off some of these windows so maybe you can hear it a little bit better. Okay, so hopefully that frees it up a little bit. Oh, and this is what the European framework looks like. Okay, so these are the children that they have. Um, these were some of the children. <laughs> okay, um, and they made these decisions. They got to decorate them. And the project, if you haven't heard of it, is where they have to make sure that the children do not get broken. They each have to take the responsibilities and take care of the children. So these were the children they created. They made it. And they were inter, you notice how it's intercultural? And they got to make decisions whether they wanted to keep the last names and things like that. So another thing that they got to do was they made many of the choices. So sometimes I would do things where I would really, you know, surprise them and get them to do things. But one of the things is, for example, they had to learn about professions. So what I had them do was I had them go ahead and they had to tell me three profession, uh, professions that they wanted. And then they got to choose and, and look up the professions and they had to interview people and different things like that. Okay, so they kept diaries and scrap books of their children's important moments. And a lot of them really enjoyed this. They really thought that it was really um, great for them to be able to do this. So a lot of them would take pictures. Um, these were some of the pictures they took of their own children. They would buy their children cars. They would dress their children. Um, and they kept really detailed diaries, such as uh, one girl, I remember reading her diary, and she hand wrote her diary. Nowadays, you can have blogs, and you can post these up on blogs, and you can have pictures up. It's really easy if you use something called posterous.com. I really recommend that. Um, and they would write things like, today, uh, Bala said her first word. Today, Bala learned how to ride a bike. And it was so great reading their emotions, especially some of the girls, because the girls, they would say, it was like everything they imagined as an adult. And I think it was really important for them because that's what I wanted my students to do. I wanted them to start thinking about being adults and making decisions based on being adults. They gave them money and they gave them silly costumes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so you see, I didn't. They went above and beyond what they, you know, what they were asked to do. Um, and then they also researched their careers. Here's an example of a student's work. Now, I didn't make this. This is part of their PowerPoint. One of them wanted to be a business administrator. So as a business administrator, she had to find somebody else in the community, and she had to interview them. So this is listening. This is speaking. This is creating the questions for the interview. 
this is going out and they actually had to email people and ask them from the different businesses and explain to them what the situation was. They found out different questions that were basic and they created presentation and they presented to everyone else. And the trick was whatever presentation you did and if you found out these questions, then this is the income that you would earn. And this was really important for other steps in the process. So this is what one person found out. So that was her salary. Um, she figured out different qualifications, um, where the companies were located. Um, and then the next thing they did was from this salary, they got to keep a budget on an Excel spreadsheet and they made decisions on cars, houses, furniture, all of this. And they had to stay within budget. Um, and then they designed their own cars on the computer. So this is some of the places. So for example, if they were making $350,000 as a couple, then they had to go to the, um, they got to decide what kind of car they wanted. Now they looked through ads, they looked through the classified ads, but they also, what I really liked for them to do was they went ahead and they went on the Porsche website. So one of the guys, of course, you know, some of the guys, even the girls, uh, it was really funny. Um, they wanted things like Hummers and Porsches. And what they did was I said, okay, you can do this. So they would take the computer time and they would go to the computer and they had to go to Porsche.com and they had to choose their interior. They had to choose um, it, the car places nowadays have these great interactive websites where you can choose all these features of your car and at the end it tells you exactly how much your car is including the shipping. So some of the students after they did all of this and they went through the process of seeing what they would have to deal with in a car s selling situation, they would make decisions and one of the boys, he was so sweet, he told his wife, um, he said okay well in that case I can't have my Porsche because I really want you to have your nice car and you wanted this kind of SUV. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take this cheaper car. So they really did help each other and figured out how their decisions would affect another person's decisions. Um, and I thought that was really, really important. Another thing that they got to do was um, they got to decide according to their children. So for example, when one of them wanted a Porsche. I said, well, how many children do you have? And they said, three. And I said, well, then, okay, you can get your Porsche. But remember, you're going to have to get a family car, too, because you're not going to be able to carry your children inside the Porsche. Can you afford both of them? And then they thought about that, and, and they really would make decisions based on that. They would look at how much gas would be part of their car situation, so then they would make decisions based on that too. So they even got to learn about the environment and their impact on the environment. Um, each week they drew misfortune cards. So this is how I added a little bit of life skills to them. And then they had to figure out together how they were going to problem solve and survive natural disasters. Um, so nowadays, you know, they have the tsunami and things like that. If they hadn't bought insurance, then they were in trouble. But even if they had bought insurance, then they were going to have to get with the person who wanted to sh um, sell insurance, and they were going to have to figure out how to collect the insurance. They were going to have to figure out how um, their children being sick, what kind of health insurance, how, when one of them lost a job, and all these kind of things, this is where the problem solving came. And they had to tell me, they had to write it up, and they had to put it in their journals. They even played the stock market. So then they even got little cards and stuff about how their stock went. They did the whole research on the Wall Street Journal. You know, you can open the research and you can look at the NASDAQ and you can do the different types of statistics and the interest and things like that. And they got to learn about the stock market that way. Now, this was one of the skills I had to teach them. I had to teach them math to English language learners. 
But this way, they were really interested in how the stock did because that impacted their whole entire um, family life project. So you kind of see how each step of this I was able to integrate all these skills, and it didn't have to be separate units, or it didn't have to be them figuring out fractions in the workbook. They were learning this, and it, it was like reality to them. It was tied into their real life, and it was tied into them wanting families and making decisions that way. But even the problems that they faced, for example, some of them had older children. So when they had older children, because um, the age progression had to go even older. Some of the cards would say, your, um, your child has had um, a got pregnant as a teen. Your child has uh, a drug problem and things like that. Your child got expelled from school. So I put them in real life situations that they may have to face. And this was the kind of way that I tackled peer pressure. Because one of the problems that I found with my students, um, one year, my five of my high school students passed away. Not mine, but the whole entire school. And we were a small community. We were about 500 students in the high school. And, and they made some really silly decisions um, that really upset me that, you know, we didn't tell these students. This was for high school specifically. But, you know, I wanted to be able to tell it help have my students make decisions that they were going to face in peer pressure situations they were already facing. Um, and I didn't want them, I didn't want to lecture them. I didn't want to say, oh, you don't do drugs. Or, um, for example, one of the students, um, uh, you know, three of our students who were really smart um, had these incredible careers in front of them, and they decided to get drunk, and they decided to race. Um, a train, and all three of them passed away. They didn't make it. And so these were one of the things that I wanted to teach my, my students. So the problem, uh, the weekly problems that they would draw, then this is how we did it. And as a group, we often looked at the problem. And we also, in a big circle, we would discuss, is that the best way to handle the problem? We would even have things such as, um, where they would suggest things and things like that. So some made enough money in the stock market, and they paid for their children's college tuition, and they bought them cars. <laughs> um, this was one of them. <laughs> he, he was bought a little Hummer. <laughs> they made little um, videos as well. So these were some of the things we did with the project. Um, and there was so much more. So I'm going to go ahead and go back. And some of you, the reason you might not be able to hear me is because of the, you may not be able to hear me because, okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, maybe you can hear me a little bit better now. <laughs> can everybody hear me? Okay. Yes? Okay, good. <laughs> um, so these were some of the things that they did. And they also made different types of videos and stuff. I couldn't even um, show you the amount of different work that they did. They did videos. They did diaries. They did scrapbooks. They did all these things um, for their children. And they also took care of their children. They had to take their children everywhere. They had to take them to their soccer practices. They had to take them to their, um, their, their proms. They had to find babysitters. So a lot of them had to do different things like that. Now, if you have any projects or ways or ideas about how you have integrated all the skills in a project-based lesson, I would really like to hear from you. <laughs> Hello, Rocket. Um, and then let me go ahead and put where you can find many of these resources. OK, that's a good question. So Allison Robertson once um, asked, you said the time frame was months. How did you assess? So that's a really good question. So every month, the students would go, and I would, I would look at what they did. What, for example, 
um, in the month, I would see how they did with the budget, if they kept their budget. I would see the problem-solving decisions. I would see which, they would have to write evaluations for themselves as well. They had to go ahead and they had to give each other grades, um, how much they worked as a partnership together. And so if one of them was off track, then they would get a lower grade. And basically, I asked them what you think that you would get as a grade. How do you think you did as a parent? How do you think you did in your profession? How did you think that you did in your problem solving? And then I would check that grade with their partner's grade, and then I would already have a grade in mind. Um, and a lot, of pe a lot of teachers are doing this now. They are, instead of having their students, um, yes, they, some people had to get a divorce, and they had to go through marriage counseling. And marriage counseling consisted of a, us in a circle, them two facing each other, talking out why they were going through a divorce. And um, they did do that. <laughs> and then they would have to decide after the marriage counseling, of course, if they were still going to get a divorce or not. But yes, they did. They, they had to go through these kind of situations. And they also got to see how Americans did it. And they talked about how in their culture, whether this would even be possible, some of my students in Japan, this wouldn't be possible. Some of my students, uh, for example, in Germany, you don't have to, you didn't at the time have to pay for college. So they got to learn about other, in the United States, um, you pay an enormous tuition. But in other countries, you don't do that. In other countries, um, as long as you pass a test, then you don't have to have that. Um, and then Anna Maria did one on Web 2.02. So I'm going to go ahead and give the mic so anybody who wants to do that um, is more than welcome to come online and to describe their lesson if they would like. <laughs> yes, yeah, see, I really think that nowadays students uh, don't get enough opportunities to really learn about ethics, really learn about making responsible um, decisions. So. Even with the students nowadays in my classes, um, I, I think that um, even for middle school students that I try to give them situations, maybe not like divorce or anything like that, um, but I do try to even talk to them about drugs and things like that because, um, or have them be in type of role playing in situations and things like that. Um, okay. So Okay, so Anna Maria, you can have the mic, and you can talk about yours. Um, just go to the very, very top. All right, can anybody hear me now? Yeah. Hey, well, um, hi Shelly, first of all. Hello Nina, hi everyone. Um, I, I was really uh, interested about the, tr the topic. As soon as I saw the topic of your session, I clicked and saw if I could join you. Um, well, this semester I, yeah, this semester I developed a project with a, uh, some groups of mine. Uh, where we used web tools to uh, develop homework activities. Um, so I proposed, first at the beginning of the semester, I prepared uh, 10 challenges I would propo propose to my students during the semester. And um, it worked beautifully. So uh, next month, in August, uh, Andresa Cardoso and I will be uh, presenting the project at a conference in Buenos Aires. So I'm going to share the link with you to the, the wiki where we publish uh, what students have uh, produced during the semester. So, second. It's uh, the school wiki. 
And we use different web tools uh, for their homework. So there it is. And well, we had we had project we had um, tasks where they had to record themselves speaking, tasks where they had uh, to uh, write using live typing or using Stixi, which is an interactive board. Um, they used Voki to record themselves. But what was most important was we tried to ask students to produce content based on the language we had learned previously or recently. Yes, uh, Voki, Stixi, live typing. Mm -hmm. Um, so let me just show you an example. This one we used Voki. Um, first, students uh, in class, we learned, or I tried to help students learn about different ways of making comparisons. And um, then they created a text at school comparing two items or comparing two sports or two people or two cities. And then they had to use Voki to record their comparisons at home. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you can see those were the avatars created by the students. Okay, uh, I guess that's all. Well, thank you so much for sharing. That's a great project. And I think that's one of the things is um, when you get into PBL and you get into project-based learning and problem-based learning, you really can teach students using multiple, um, in using technology, you can really help students with the objectives. We don't have to stick to the book. We can still teach the curriculum. We can still teach about ethics. Uh, we can still teach them about effective communication, and we can still teach them what is on the test to be covered, but we can do it in very innovative ways. Um, so hopefully that helps a lot. Anna Maria, um, uh, maybe you can share your blog too, because you do so, so much great things. <laughs> I love your blog in the different ways that you do a lot of these projects. <laughs> and Heidi had asked, how old were the students? And the same thing, the students were the teens. But even with my four-year-olds, um, we do digital storytelling projects. And that's the way that we help, um, I help teach them those skills. So I think with any type of age group, you can do project-based learning. And you can cover the, the skills that you need to cover inside your classroom. So if you come into this situation where you have to teach you know, that you, you worry about teaching your students um, the test objectives or that you're covering the objectives or that you have to teach it a certain curriculum, um, you can cover it, just make it more hands-on and project-based. <laughs> so hopefully that really helped you today. And if you have any questions, you can reach me at Shelly Terrell, and I'm going to put that in the chat box, at gmail.com, and I will email you certificates. And if of attendance, because some of you will get professional development credit for this, so that's really great. And you can see me next Friday when we talk about